have a full-time job and I live about an hour from my work. It's a retail store. I'm really good at spotting things. I'm very uh, into detail and I'm very perfectionist, so I definitely find the little thing, the little tiny detail that probably a computer program cannot find. Probably ever since humankind exists, people got fascinated about the myriads of pinpoints of light on the night sky. When we embark on the search for new worlds, we enter a new era of exploration, similar to when humankind started exploring new worlds on Earth. In astronomy, we're very extremely lucky that there are a lot of people who are really enthusiastic about astronomers who are not professional scientists, but amateurs. And they really contribute to real science. That people have no experience on what a scientist is really doing. From that point you get this perception is this crazy guy in the, in the lab coat. We also have an enormous opportunity with new media really to get science out. Hi, I'm Deborah Fisher and I'm a professor of astronomy at Yale University. Uh, my job is to find planets orbiting nearby stars and today we're going to introduce a new project for you called Planet Hunters. With Planet Hunters, citizen scientists will be able to evaluate one of these light curves in a matter of seconds. So the very first time I logged into the website, once I watched that video, I went to the side guide and it shows you a bit tutorials what to do. You have a star in another solar system. Then you have the planet passing in front and the light will dim a bit and you have to flag up if you see something unusual. Everybody can do it. It doesn't matter if you do it well or not. From the moment that a scientist has had a look at that, then it's perfect. I wouldn't say I log in every day, but I do almost, uh, I don't know, three, two, three times a week maybe, um, when I come back from work and I just want to chill out. I just sit here and, uh, and uh, make a contribution to science, I think. <laughs> Amateurs themselves, we'll just go back to the meaning of the word. Amateur is someone who loves what he's doing. So someone really loves what he's doing. He's very likely to do a good job. So that's what also professional science is. It should not only be professional, it also should be amateur. I remember the day, I remember the, the day it happened. Um, I joined end of 2010. So December 2010, I went onto the website, I, I logged in, I became a, a user. And two weeks later, the 1st of January 2011, I've seen um, a light curve that was different, that had transits. And I flagged it up and I'm like, you know, when I saw it instantaneously, I thought, this is a planet. Obviously, you cannot say it's a planet until it's confirmed, but I'm like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm looking at a planet here. Um, and I remember turning around and saying to my boyfriend, I found a planet! And he, he was just laughing. He's like, 
Ja, okay. There's actually a bit more to just anyone can just go out and, and, and find another planet. And the science is really not just in finding another planet, it's really to, to understand what is out there. What are the different planets that are out there? How do we fit in with planet Earth within the planets that are out there? So those are the, the deep scientific questions rather than just doing planet hunting. It actually took us a lot of time until we were for the first time successful to find a planet by microlensing. If we want to understand what's out there, it's not only about what we find, it's also about what we don't find. So knowing that something is not out there carries the same information content. But for a hunter, it's a very bad outcome. For a scientist, it is not. I've been involved in gravitational microlensing for about 15 years or so. My ambition was always to push the field with new things. I think innovation is the key. What we do is we look at stars near the center of the Milky Way, wait for another star, passing in the foreground, light from the more distant stars gets bent around the foreground star, and as a result we see the background star being brightened on a time scale of about a month. Now if there's a planet around the foreground star, its gravitational field also affects the bending of light. As a result we see a small dip or blip, which lasts just between hours and days depending on the mass of the planet. After about 10 years, we saw a signature of the planet. And it was a signal that only lasted about 24 hours, just one night. It's amazing to think all these people are watching the same thing as I do. My name is Bea. Whatever they're doing, whatever the time it is in their country, we're all together at the same time doing the same thing. Everybody with their own language, everybody with their own timetables and, and work and everything, everybody's helping out, helping to find planets. But there's one question that arises after you made such a discovery. Will something like that ever happen to me again? So was that, was that already the peak of my career? Nothing is coming after that. And that was a, that was a serious worry. Now with ongoing efforts, just having pushed for a lot of innovation, I'm more confident there is still more to come. I think this wasn't a one-off.